as as you know, I have been absolutely down the rabbit hole, down the throat, up the butt of Niji Sanji lately. So, we're in for quite the treat on this glorious day. My boy, Mudahar, some ordinary gamer, has made a video on the downfall of Niji Sanji. And, um, so here's the thing. When it comes to different dramas, I know who to pitch the different drama situations to. I, uh, I spoke to Charlie about Niji Sanji many times in the past. And specifically, talking to Charlie about Niji Sanji, he was always like about the treatment of the talents and stuff because that's really where his head's at. He has a management company that has to deal with treating their talents properly. When I pitched this to Muda, I'm like, yo, Muda, big financial situation going on. Mmm, percentages and numbers. A yacht sinking. Mmm, stock prices drop by 20%. And then Muda's just like, oh. <laughs> I, I literally messaged him, when are you making this video? And his response was, it's on the radar. Then two hours later, he's like, okay, never mind, video tomorrow. <laughs> ah, dude, I love this. I love this. I'm in such a lucky spot. Able to just pitch horrible ideas and curse shit to everybody. Slowly pulling the strings. No, Muda would have made this video even without me, I'm just saying. But uh, I like to make believe that I had a part of it because... Every time I see Niji Sanji's downfall, vindication, bro. Vi literally, you have and you have no idea how much hate I got from Niji stands over the last couple of months. Hello, guys and gals. Look how happy he is. Look how happy. Me, Mudahar, and today we're gonna talk about the biggest implosion in a VTuber group. Now you might be wondering, whoa, Muda, why are you talking about VTubers like that? Yeah. Yeah, what are you talking about, VTubers? Not like you know any VTubers. Not like you know anybody personally that might be a VTuber that might have gotten hate from Niji Sanji in the past. Yeah, the closest affiliation you have is uh -oh. with your co-host, uh -oh. Nux. Ah! Nux jump scare happens every time. Nux, Nux jump scare. Aku on the Some Ordinary Podcast. Yeah, uh, by the way, for those of you that are living under a rock and don't know, we have a weekly podcast, me, Mudahar, and Oompaville, and it's awesome and amazing. And the latest one had Keemstar, and I called him bald twice. Uh, and also made fun of him for killing a dog. It was a great episode. But ladies and gentlemen, to be real with you, this is such a big implosion <laughs> that it actually goes beyond <laughs> VTuber circles. I'm looking at it from a really, really terrible- Business stuff! Business stuff! Business stuff! I covered this from like the VTuber social drama aspect, like the different personalities and VTuber social stances and all this stuff. Oh, the reason why I am so excited for this video specifically is this is a guy looking at it from a corporation standpoint. And uh, let's do it, baby. Let's do it. Business perspective. This is quite possibly how not to manage <laughs> PR for yeah. a massive multi-billion <laughs> oh dollar God, industry. Dude. So to give you an idea. It's not about the money. <laughs> it's about sending the message. It's, it's Jover. It's literally Jover. When Mudahar pulls out a goddamn video on a company, that company is not in a good spot. And now listen. Niji Sanji fans that are slowly getting converted to Nux fans because it turns out I was based all along. I have one word to say to you. Vindication! Yeah, what is a VTuber, okay? You probably heard this term a few too many times, but to give you a quick idea, Whoa. basically a regular YouTuber like me shows my face on camera all day, every day. Cringe. But a VTuber is Cringe. a YouTuber that is priding themselves Based. on their anonymity. They've got Based. lore, they've got backstory, and most Based. importantly, their 2D slash 3D representations of virtual characters. That's me. You too can be a VTuber today if you use popular face rigging software. Oh my God, I use this popular face rigging software. This guy's so relatable. Just basically, you know, you, 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 you represent yourself with a 2D animated character sprite. Now, ladies and gentlemen. A lot of people don't realize the fact that VTubers are just YouTubers. Except instead of a camera, it's a character that they're using. It's a massive idol culture trend. To give you an idea, there are some key massive VTuber markets, okay? VTuber organizations. Oh, yeah. One of them being Yehua Entertainment. Uh, I mean, the sentiment is correct. <laughs> no! I mean, the sentiment is right, but that's not a VTuber organization. That's an idol organization. Now, the VTuber organizations in Japan operate like idol companies and idol companies in japan um basically they they own their talent and they treat them horribly like you have no idea the levels of degenerate shit that they do to their idols like uh you had an idol that was seen with a boy once and they would take the idol 
literally bring her into the public eye and shave her head in public to humiliate her. One of them being Kizuna AI, an actual group that I know from all the way back in the PUBG days. This is my first introduction to actual VTubers, okay? This isn't a VTuber that I actually watched because I was interested in the concept of somebody basically role-playing a virtual character <laughs> working in the real world. You've got Hololive Production, Good Smile, and of yeah. course, the culprit of today, e Niji Sanji, e e e e e e which is an organization. Vindication! <laughs> all right, I'm never gonna stop doing this. You might think I'm gonna stop doing this. You're wrong. It will never happen. I am never gonna stop doing that. Station, a group that is slowly imploding into fucking nothing <laughs> off of what <laughs> is <laughs> sorry 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 i'm not, i know i shouldn't be happy at the downfall of another man anyway some really bad alleged practices in their organization which we'll be getting to now today's video is brought to you by our sponsor please check on your men by your sponsor nux taku the greatest sponsor of all time. I sponsor every video that shits on Niji Sanji for treating me. Mental health. Some of the actual things we're talking about today involve really serious topics Damn. like bullying. In fact, in some situations, some of the people we'll be looking at over here have actually been hospitalized over what are some serious mentally draining situations. Yeah, I, I thought so he was getting it into a joke, but no. Honestly, like, listen, I've been diving into this situation for a long time now, okay? I know the ins and outs of exactly what's going on. Um, I'm so happy this isn't like a better help sponsorship and he's actually taking telling people to take care of themselves because that's so important. And ladies and gentlemen, if you ever feel like you're going through something serious and you need somebody to talk to, there are free resources available. And if you ever feel like there's friends, there's family, there's people online, there's therapy, you're never freaking alone, bro. If things get too much for you, please step back and ultimately try to focus on your mental health. It's as important as your physical health. And if you deny its care, based then Mudahar. ultimately really, really bad things end up spawning out Very of based again, Mudahar. to tell you why I'm getting so serious about it, you have to take the story all the way back to May 2023. No, no, no. You have to take the story a long way back. I think people don't realize... Uh how far back this story actually goes um either talk to a therapist or just bottle up your emotions like a man anyway <clears throat> that was terrible advice but the point is this story goes back a long long time before that this story starts at the the paleozoic era of when idol industries formed and managers fucking owned their talent like they were freaking pets okay doggies at a dog show doing tricks for their masters that was the idol culture where people would get attached to these idols and these talents who would live a lie forced to obey and bark when their master says bark and sit when their master says sit that's where the story starts. Nichi Sanji is the dystopian version of this that not only continues to do that from the wildest, in the wildest way in the Japanese side of things, they thought that they could freaking imbue this idol culture into the Western side of things. They, they control you and uh, make you breathe on command, okay? Anyway, uh, that, that's where this started. Now with Selene specifically, <laughs> it also started long before this. <laughs> The person we're talking about today is somebody known as Selen Tatsuki, also known as Doki Bird. But for now, we're going <laughs> to... Bro doesn't know about the whole weird taboo shit at all. I love it so much. Th this is why I'm specifically interested in when uh, people that are outside the VTuber sphere cover this shit. Because in the whole VTuber sphere, there's Selen Tatsuki. She had a past life that we will be talking about. Now, Doki Bird, a similar character. Nah, nah. You know, you don't want to actually conflate the two because all these cringe taboos in the VTuber world that I've been pushing back against and finally I'm winning. I'm literally finally winning. Guys, you don't understand. I've been pushing back against these cringe taboos for years. Oh, you can't talk about their past life. Bro, if you have someone that in their past life before joining Niji Sanji was a fucking predator groomer guy just because he's now in niji sanji it doesn't mean we're not allowed to talk about that okay i've been saying this for years and what can i that's all i have to say ladies and gentlemen that is my that is what i have to say i have lived i have outlived my haters to keep this to sell in tatsuki back in may 2023 she had hosted a contest where she let her fans design her next outfit so again pretty basic stuff i would say pretty wholesome uh honestly this is awesome for management too management doesn't even need to pay a designer 
She can do it herself. And this is a Niji Sanji English VTuber that was basically hosting this contest. And what it actually ended up coming out to was that basically she was the one paying out of pocket and not Niji Sanji. So again, to fully clarify here, he's 100% right. He's 100% right. Niji Sanji, uh, I've said this in, when I've uh, talked about the whole critical attacking Niji Sanji th situation. Niji Sanji will give their talent a platform and that is it. Niji Sanji is not actually here at all to help you once you fucking start off. They don't fund your project. They don't help you succeed. They don't do anything for you. That That's... That is why Niji Sanji is a, such a disaster. Uh, I don't think there's any other VTuber corporation in the world that does... Uh, I can think of one or two. That... <laughs> oh, God. Now, according to this, you can actually see that Selen says negotiated again with management and the form will be corrected soon. Five designs will be picked and will be awarded $1,000 each, but only one will become an official outfit. Please note that I'm paying the prize out of my own pocket and not the company. Because company doesn't give garbo. They don't do anything. They are literally the least supportive support system in the history of time. And it's finally been revealed. That I don't think Muda included this in his video. We got our our hands by we i mean the greater community that's finally looking into all this stuff got our hands on the uh the hiring practices of niji sanji who they hired to be managers the people they hired to be managers are japanese people with a passable conversational english skills where they would pay them minimum wage part-time jobs targeting high school students Okay? A lot of people don't know this. That is who they hired as managers. High school students that they could pay as little as possible to work as few hours as possible with barely passable English conversational skills. That was the management team a $3 billion company had set up to support these talents. Okay? I think it's very important to be aware um, of how awful that is. Prayer emoji. I was told no originally and can't provide prizes and fought for it for a long time as shown on past. And then Niji sees this and his Niji's like, well, you're making us look pretty bad. Well, yeah, well, you, you fucking are pretty bad. Dreams. So I am glad that I can finally award artists some form of compensation in the end after fighting for so long to even be able to host it. Her Crazy. plight with her VTube management company, Niji Sanji, wasn't even an issue where she could basically ask them to front five grand, just $5,000 dollars to pay but, but this is a three billion dollar company by the way for again a prize for artists which ultimately would have been a net positive for any company's pr no she had to fight just to be able to host the event yeah, to clarify it, it's insane it's insane how little niji sanji is willing to give their talents it is absolutely mind-boggling to me to this day how they thought this was a good business move and they literally didn't they literally just didn't fund any of this, and everyone had to do everything out of their own pocket. It's insane. I originally wanted to provide prizes out of my own pocket, but that was denied at first. Yeah, they, they want you to do nothing. They do not want your content to be good. You join Niji Sanji, and they're like, all right, now stream a billion hours. We don't want the content to be good. We don't want anything in your life other than literally streaming content for us, and we will collect the play buttons. I always wanted to support artists and had done so throughout my career here in Niji Sanji. So interestingly enough, she was willing to do this out of her own pocket, but again, to pull teeth to even run a fucking contest is insanity. Yeah. Now, this is yep. one situation that's yep. been referenced. Dude, it's so nice to see the greater like YouTuber commentary community finally see just how awful and batshit insane the Niji Sanji system is. It's not the only situation. There appears to be a litany of other things, but this is where like her her relationship with this big VTuber organization was basically, uh, you know, under jeopardy, right? Now, of course, fast forward to December, late December 2023. Oh, oh, just baby. around Christmas time, which only comes once a year, she uploads a cover <laughs> of a song known as the... Uh, that, that's some good commentary community research, ladies and gentlemen. Christmas time comes once a year. Last cup of coffee. Now, this song existed on her channel for a little bit before apparently... Yeah, for like a an hour was taken down and re-uploaded by various people in the community now this song is apparently a song that uh, basically initially was conceived by a youtuber known as lily pichu but of course she decided to offer some form of cover herself and it seems as though she actually did end up getting a lot of the permissions from lily pichu and people that yeah, even lily pichu agreed that she gave permission a over a year earlier 
over a year before she posted it, she got permission. And she was still fighting with management tooth and nail every day to be allowed to post it. Really were the rights holder of this audio. This is something she just wanted to do. Well, it promptly gets privated shortly after. By management, obviously. She releases it. And of course, she says, hey, I apologize, but management has privated the song. Please feel free to re-upload since a lot of money and effort was done by so many dragoons. I'm really sad that this happened on Christmas, but I hope Bro. somehow you guys will still be able to listen. It's so nice to finally see Muda look into this conversation and be like, wow, this is like gloriously fucked up. You mean these are the people that, that Nux has been fighting with for the last two years? You mean that all this time that Nux has been fighting with like these Niji Sanji people? Like they've been fight, he's been fighting with like these, these brain dead assholes, this massive giga corporation that's just made out of that, that their brain cells are stuck together with spit and duct tape vindication i'm just saying i'm just saying i'm just saying it's a glorious day and do it in some way i have never seen talent and their talent agencies having so much public fuck yous being thrown okay like literally when the talent itself this is this translates to guys i wish i could do something but my dick bag of a management firm refuses <laughs> Talent should be nurtured by their agency. You don't say! Yeah, yeah, you'd think that, like, here's the crazy thing is, I, I pre-watched the Niji Sanji drama a year ago. Um, I have I have a very hot take, and that is the fact that, believe it or not, if you're part of a talent agency, they should be giving you something. <laughs> I know it's hard to believe, but <laughs> it's crazy. Just to let me have the slightest happens. bit of freedom. That literally is what it translates to. That level of open... Oh, yeah, you get zero freedom in Niji Sanji. They want you to know that they own you. That's why they keep everyone's uh, silver play buttons. Th they want you to know that nothing you create belongs to you. They want you to know that even your personality doesn't belong to you. They want you to know that they own not just this model but your content and your personage, they own you, okay? And when you get, and if you do want to leave Niji Sanji, Niji Sanji will release an entire laundry list of crimes that you may or may not have committed and also force you into signing that you will never contest these claims or they'll sue you. Um, I, I, I wish I could actually publicly show you some of the, the Niji contracts uh, if I hypothetically had some, like, <laughs> not that I would have any, obviously. <laughs> Me? Have Niji Sanji contract? That's crazy. That's insane. But if, uh, hypothetically, if I did have them and know what they said, I would love to show them to you um, and not be in actual issues for leakage um, because they're insane. They're absolutely insane. You don't understand how they how they operate. You join Niji Sanji because you want the platform. Turns out Niji Sanji doesn't actually do anything for you. And you can't really leave Niji Sanji because if you do want to leave, they will make this whole termination notice with a whole bunch of bullet points as to why you're evil. And they will not let you fight back or answer back. You can't even acknowledge that you were part of Niji Sanji. That is how badly they silence you. Disdain is something that just shocks me looking in this organization, especially when these groups are supposed to be a little bit more prim and proper, I would say. So a couple, <laughs> a couple days after the removal of that initial like uh, music video, what happened then was her account makes another like actual tweet. I apologize for the silence. I've been. Hey, that's a weird. Uh, pay attention to this, by the way, this apostrophe over here for I've like it, it looks funny. It looks like a comma. Hmm, interesting, because you see, uh, that is how a Japanese keyboard makes an apostrophe. It's later been proven that this tweet, I apologize for the silence, I've been in the hospital after an accident and will be staying there. It's later proven that management made this tweet, and she didn't. Management already kicked her out of this account, and she... <laughs> <laughs> and they fucking made this tweet saying, I apologize for the silence. I've been in the hospital after an accident. We'll be staying for that. And, and, and management just said this themselves. How fucking insane is that? How absolutely insane is that? In the hospital after an accident. And we'll be staying there for a few days to be under supervision. I just got back access to my phone yesterday. <laughs> I just got access to my phone. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, uh-huh, mm -hmm. I, the manager, just got access to Selene's phone yesterday. 
Now, of course, obviously people can be a little bit concerned. What was the actual situation over here? And of course, there's some people who decided to start a little conspiracy here. Apostrophe gate is what they call Yo, it. Yo, he got it. He's getting into the apostrophes. Bro, I'm telling you, this man dots his eyes and crosses his T's. He is in it, brother. So basically when they looked into her account over here, they found out that apparently because of the type of apostrophe being used. Yo, oh my God, he's so based. I cannot believe he went this deep. In this situation. Mudahar, more like Godahar. Apparently, it appeared that maybe management people were speculating that they were the ones to be able to make that, you know. Yeah, like whenever you see like the this apostrophe, it's like, mm, yeah, well, I'm so sorry I'll be delaying stream 30 minutes. Yeah, that was her that tweeted it. But when you see I'm going to be away from social media for a while, that's a secret stealth punishment from management. This has also been, uh, well... It's been proven to me, at least in private, uh, as to when this happens. Some people might tell me in private when it happens. But uh, here's the thing. Very often when uh, different Niji Sanji talent want to go on break or say, oh, I'm going to be away from social media for a little bit. I'm going to be taking time with my family. When they make basic tweets like that, turns out uh, that's just management tweeting and management's punishing them for something. Management will literally say, you fucked up. We are going to punish you by not letting you stream for two weeks. By the way, that is half of a month's income down the toilet. Just saying. We're punishing you by not letting you stream for a few weeks. And then they tweet from the talent account saying, oh, hey, I'm going to be chilling with family. How fucked up is that? It's so fucked up. Like, it's insane. It's actually insane tweet and not actually herself it ended up being debunked like this started off as like a 4chan like side investigation yeah, 4chan side investigations turn out to be right way too often especially in the vtuber sphere but apparently it was due to the fact that she may have been using different devices like apple devices android devices Maybe. and typically desktop mm. devices will just give you mm. like different right, apostrophes right, right. or different font faces and that typically is the actual example i guess that people were looking at that's how the debunking went there was also another example, too, where people looked at maybe the fact that she was in the hospital, that instead of even management, the people that they were talking to was actually the emergency contacts, which would have been the parents in the situation. But that's pretty much generally how the situation had went. Anyways, yeah. we're getting... A anyway, she ended up in the hospital is the point right now. Uh... So people were a little bit concerned. Like she disappears out of nowhere and she's gone out of this organization. She's in the hospital for crying out loud. What, what was is this going accident? on? So now Niji. Right. So for, for weeks at this point, it's been trending everywhere. You know, where is Selene? Like, where is she? Literally, where the hell is she? She was just gone off the map. Sanji, January 10th, about a couple weeks later at this point, says, Due to unforeseen reasons, we would like to announce that Sel and Tatsuki will not be able to participate in any activities at Anime Impulse, Los Angeles 2024 on January 13th and 14th. We sincerely apologize for the inconvenience and disappointment caused. To fans who have been looking forward to this, we hope that you will still enjoy the performances by other Awful. Niji Sanji and Livers who are Awful. participating in the Niji Sanji block party at Anime Impulse. It's literally, it's literally, they are using the, we are firing Selene from all of these things that you should totally join. It's like, it's literally like plugging shit in the termination notice. Like, do you, that's awful. Anime Impulse will directly contact all Sel and Tatsuki fan meet and greet ticket holders in regards to her ticket refunds. So yeah, no shit people were getting a little Insane. bit worse. Insane. Insane. Guys, I am so sorry that I had sex with a horse on camera. I felt awful that when I did it and it was completely inappropriate. Buy my new merch. It's called We're Just Horsing Around. <laughs> <laughs> like bro that's literally what happened worried obviously a hospital incident missing your action hashtag that that's a that was a vosh quote you wouldn't understand well like big events meet and greets especially in january when these anime conventions typically in los angeles are you know they, they do tend to have a pretty big turnout and again yeah. after that I don't, I don't think you realize how massive niji sanji's audience was i realized because they all took turns trying to butt fuck me uh, every time i would criticize them <laughs> But hey, that's just a theory, an asshole theory. Of coffee music video, that incident, that problem that happened. Apparently, according to these fans, not a single current Niji N member has even mentioned her since that music video issue or the tweet stating she yep, was. You're not allowed. They, they silenced them. You don't understand. It's not just like, 
we want you to stream this or stream that. It's it's they literally silence them. They tell them you are not allowed to mention this person. It's crazy. Pain or discharge from the it's hospital, crazy. giving a perception as if they're not allowed to. Pomu's graduation was announced and taken place over this time as well. Selen was not able to say goodbye to Pomu on stream in any form or fashion. So yeah, it seems like this person just straight up disappeared, like they, the earth swallowed them whole. Now I mean, pretty much. That That's literally what's going on. Uh, that That is the Niji meta. They will silence you and they will throw you into a hole. And for anybody wondering what a graduation is, a graduation, like I said, VTuber culture originates from Japanese idol culture. And in this situation, the term graduation actually comes from an 80s, uh, you know, idol group back in Japan, the Onyanko Club. Dude, AKB48, that's these guys, I think, right? No, no, th this is before the AKB48. Yeah, the, the, the idol industry is absolutely awful. Again, I, I'm working with somebody right now that's doing a lot of research into the idol, idol industry stuff right now. Dude, it is so bad. Where basically, you know, the children, like the, the people at the time in this group, in this, in this, uh, in this, in this uh, idol group were actually, you know, people that were supposed to be in high school. So when they were graduating, uh, one of their actual, uh, you know, big members who actually were, was retiring, that's what a graduation is. Like you're retiring, at least hopefully on good terms. Um, so basically the nomenclature is graduating is departing on good terms and um, terminated is being fired, obviously on bad terms. Now, the crazy thing is that people still aren't really talking about it, in my opinion, enough. A lot, very, Niji Sanji would, they have mixed bag here. If they feel like the person that's leaving is gonna end up being a hindrance to them, then they would rather terminate them and silence them in court than let them graduate. However, if they don't think that they're actually going to pose a threat to them, well, then why start drama? Let's just let them graduate. And it's a very, in my, my very uninformed opinion that, oh, how could I possibly know anything? That's very much the, the, uh, the impression I get. That it's a very person-to-person -person basis where they're just trying to set it up in a way that the company looks as good as possible. And when you retire, it's usually because you're too old to be part of a, you know, teen pop idol group. And genuinely, some of these people are probably going to pursue, like, education. In one case... Yeah, very often that happens. Uh, also, they might shave your head if you embarrass them. So, you know, that's just average idol culture shit. In the Onyanko Club, one of the actual members was pursuing, like, dentistry or something. And they left the organization. And the same can apply for VTubers after... After a while, when their contract runs up, they basically grab- Am I getting so many wait what's? I can't believe no one knows the actual horrors of the idol industry. I say it for years, I get hate for years. Now finally people are starting to realize that the idol industry is toxic and shouldn't just be praised as a different culture or whatever. And, and, and suddenly, wow, what has he been saying all of this time? Yeah, they saw a idol, I think in the AKB48 group, uh, with another, with a guy. And as- uh, and obviously the uh, the fandom got very upset. Obviously because uh, with a guy, I I how how could she be with a guy? Who oh, she should be pure for us us fans. So they demanded retribution. So they literally took her in public and shaved her head in public as a public humiliation to her audience. They're sent out, they move away, and it is what it is. And new blood sort of jumps in. And again, even other people, friends of Selen, had yeah, actually you literally. You're not. You can't even contact your friends when this goes down. It's it's fucked up. They started jumping in like RPR. It's been over a month of pure silence and it's starting to get concerning. Like at this moment, I'm actually wondering if something serious has happened behind the scenes and this person has straight up just went missing. Like it's been almost a month since they've even said a word. No, so the crazy thing is like they'll get a tweet like I'm in the hospital and then silence for a month. Like what? Even their own friends can D dude, you don't understand. They own your Discord too, right? So like they, they just kick you out of your Discord and you have no one to talk to. How are you going to contact anybody? Brother. So now fast forward to what is about a week ago. February 5th, 2024. Every single video uploaded on her actual like YouTube channel. Selen Tatsuki has been privated. It's gone. Like at this point. Yeah, they and the reason why it's gone is because they own you. All the work that she has done over the last few years for Niji Sanji. She was one of the core members establishing Niji Sanji English. Poof. Poof. Bye-bye.
They just straight up deleted this person. They deleted 100 million views in an instant. From existence. Everything is gone. No community posts, no nothing. It's like the channel didn't even exist or anything. It's crazy. But of course, Niji Sanji, their world account, posts, notice, termination of Selen Tatsuki's- I hate this tweet. This tweet's fucking horrible. Contract with Any Color. Any Color is the actual parent organization of the Niji Sanji group, Any, Any Color Incorporation. Yeah. We hereby announce that we have had to make the difficult decision to terminate our contract with the Niji Sanji and Liver, the live YouTuber, if you will. Livers are just streamers in corpo speak. Well, the, the VTuber, selling Tatsuki effective immediately due to repeated breaches of contract and misleading statements on social platforms. Misleading because uh, the company is always right. We are always morally virtuous and poggers. How dare you even consider that the statements that she said that are negative towards the company are actually bad? Oh, no, no, no. God damn. Attached is the detail explanation of the circumstances that led to this decision being taken thank you for your understanding and it's actually fucking beautiful when like community notes have jumped in lack of communication with creators in delays in selling tatsuki's commission payment to creators creators who have been commissioned by selen have stepped forward denying these claims even saying that she paid them out of pocket due to management not doing so damn i think so obviously i think um a lot of this is just them being useless, like Niji Sanji being useless and, and doing all this shit, in my opinion, and, and I think that this should be everyone's opinion, the worst part is Niji Sanji knew that she tried to take her own life and still decided to publicly blast her like this and be so vague about the misleading statements and shit so that hopefully their audience will just believe them like they did in previous situations. Yeah, that's, that's goddamn embarrassing for such a massive organization like this. So here they actually straight up right. We with regret we had to make the difficult decision to terminate our affiliation contract. Yeah. So of course they reference multiple breaches of misleading statements. So for instance, what they say is despite our efforts to uphold these rules, Selen Tatsuki has repeated. They try so much. The rules are gospel. They are like the Bible too. <laughs> and this blasphemous creator has tarnished our day when we did nothing wrong we violated the activity so now we're gonna silence her and and threaten her with lawsuits so that she doesn't actually ever speak up against us listen we are right and we're open to hearing anyone that disagrees if they could beat our lawyers first <laughs> yo let's go dude rules since joining niji sanji in july 2021 selling tatsuki's actions in violation of the activity rules encompass a wide range of issues such as non-compliance with rights confirmations and authorization flows so that music video where like apparently you know lily pichu apparently had like the rights or whatnot she even came out and said yeah here's the craziest shit they keep talking about uh, um, such as non-compliance with rights confirmation and authorization flows, which could possibly lead to infringements of third-party rights, including copyright. That whole line is bullshit. Uh, it's later been actually proven by Niji Sanji themselves because they're, uh, aside from being evil, they're also brain dead. They uh, they released this this statement saying that the issue was potentially copyright when later it was be not because of copyright at all. It was only because they, uh, Selene in her music video showed talents that have already left Niji Sanji and spent $15,000 on the music video already. That is why they ended up having an issue with that going public. And they, the fact that they are lying about it in this post is because how could they possibly have said something like that in the firing post? Oh, we're firing her because she mentioned talent that have already left Niji Sanji and we're butthurt that they left Niji Sanji. So we don't want her to mention it because we're fucking assholes. Uh, so they, they blamed it on copyright instead, which was a lie. Like an actual lie that has been proven to be a lie by Niji Sanji themselves. Like they, they themselves said it in their response. That no, it, it's okay. She 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 has the right. She she can she can do it. I, I'm giving her the rights holding. They decided that 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 wasn't flying by them, which is fucking insane. So then they yeah, said, and, unless it's a lie, unless it's not true at all, and that's not the reason why they didn't let them they didn't let her post the video. It's leading to the actual suspension, right? So what they said over here is on December 26, 2023, Selen Tatsuki posted a music video uh, without prior approval, as required by the activity rules. Activity rules. 
That's important. The materials for the music videos were shared for the first time with our management on December 24th. Since some element in the music video lacked proper authorization, on 25th, we communicated that permission needed to be obtained from relevant parties. Our immediate response was to make the music video private until all authorizations were confirmed from our... I love how they, they like do such a good job explaining their side, and then in their contract, they don't let the other side explain their side at all. They're like, yes, we will explain everything in great detail. We might be lying through our ass, but no one will ever call us out on it because, well, they are legally bound to this contract where they can't ever even acknowledge that they were Selen. End. At the same time, the reasoning was clearly explained to Selen. However, Selen took to social media, making misleading statements that omitted essential context. So, yeah, this is a situation where I guess she went yeah, out of, cool. like, their activity rules, and they just basically, like, didn't graduate or she didn't graduate. Mm -mm. She got straight up fucking terminated and fired. Straight up deleted. Unpersoned, if you will. And this is where I actually have a bit of an issue personally oh. with this organization, because Personal given issues. the serious nature of what, you know, Doki Bird and, you know, the, uh, the, the affected party actually went through uh, on a personal level, the personal trauma, this is like classic Japanese PR. It's literally going going bullet points over company bureaucratic and fractures and just it's also full of lies basically saying that they're right even with their first point saying that they had to communicate with rights holders it's kind of insane that the cover of the song she's covering on right like she's like using the actual rights holder lily pichu did come out and notify well in advance that yeah everything appears to be good everything is gravy so with all of this stuff basically being tossed ah. in, how what what rule is because it was a lie because it was a lie, and that wasn't the real reason why they didn't give her approval for the song. The real reason... Okay, again, listen, I uh, I told you. I've, I'm so on top of this story because I've been literally going at Niji Sanji for months now. Um, Because it was a lie. It's not about the copyright at all. It was because it showed previous talent. And every talent that leaves Niji Sanji... Okay, let me let me tell you how these these people think. Okay, every time a talent leaves Niji Sanji, it hurts Niji Sanji's pride. Forget the brand, forget the talent, forget the people. It hurts their pride that for some reason these talents are not with them anymore. So they uh, they feel hurt personally on a personal level. So they want to write them out of existence in any way possible. They don't let their talents even talk about past talents that have left Niji Sanji. Even when they leave on good terms, that's just a PR move, and then they want to make believe they don't exist. Um, so that's why they didn't let Selene post the video. Obviously, that sounds petty as shit, so they can't actually say that in the termination notice, so they blame it on copyright instead. That's, 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 that's just a theory, a Nux theory being broken there is actually so much conflicting information and it's hard to assess who is right but it's not that hard here's the thing even if like even if Selen is 100% in the wrong and Niji Sanji is 100% in the right this is a situation where a termination should have been handed out privately neutrally so that this kind of situation wouldn't escalate to the point where one party is planning to leave the planet for good that's how insane this situation is and you know this is where allegations yeah, dude like just if I, I the reason why I don't feel bad for shitting on Niji Sanji right now is because they're not human enough to care that Selene almost took her own life twice. They're not human enough for that. And they don't deserve my mercy. ...of this company being a black company come out into, where I guess you could say it's like an exploitative sweatshop practice, but we'll get to that in a bit. Oh, please. So I, I wouldn't even say it's the sweatshop thing. Obviously, this is a very consented situation. Like, uh... It's not a surprise why people want to join Niji Sanji. Joining Niji Sanji gets you an audience right off the bat. You are there streaming to four viewers on your YouTube channel, okay? You join Niji Sanji, and suddenly you're given a channel with 100,000 subscribers and 10,000 10, live viewers, okay? Like, obviously, it's a huge bump up, even though they take 98% of the merch sales. At this point, things get even wilder. So Doki Bird, who apparently, from my understanding, and correct me if I'm wrong, is selling, but not selling as Niji Sanji selling. This is <laughs> Doki Bird. They're this is my guy trying to talk about the weird Niji stuff. Nux out here ignoring the chat. I try sometimes. Revived, new name, new persona, freedom. I will not be silenced anymore. I'm now, this is what Niji Sanji never expected. Niji Sanji has their small army of lawyers sharpening their pencils and pushing their glasses higher on their face, absolutely ready to annihilate the enemy. This is something they didn't anticipate. 
And thank God she went down this route. In December, I was hospitalized for an attempt that was caused by a buildup of bullying from within and being in a toxic and poor environment for several, for numerous months. That led to now my notice she never mentions Niji Sanji. She never mentions anything because she's not allowed to even say that she used to be Selene. That's part of the contract. It's so stifling. You have to kind of talk and code the whole time. Breaking point. I requested to leave first, but on more neutral terms on J J uh, 26th January. Yeah, everyone wants so to, again, right? Things get really serious. Everyone wants to leave on good terms. No one wants to get into drama. And then there's me, Vindication! It's over here. Obviously, that kind of a work environment should never be tolerated by anybody. And of course, well, even the well, other well. people, like the designers in this situation, ended up coming out and basically said it felt bad seeing her be terminated. The people that designed her costume, even. So in the background, as Niji yep. Sanji was basically unpersoning her from her own built platform, basically, they didn't... <laughs> uh, it's so like, imagine being a YouTuber that doesn't know the VTuber stuff and just hearing this story. It's like, wait a second. So I make the platform, you make the platform. Uh, okay, you have the, uh, you, you have the build the audience, you build the audience. You do all the content, you do all the content. You stream for eight hours a day, you stream for eight hours a day. My content, though. We own you. <laughs> it's like, what the, wait, what, what, no, no, no. No, that doesn't make any sense. I, I built the platform. These guys are all here for me, yeah. No, I own you. <laughs> It's like so far fetched. It's so far fetched. Remove the moderators on a lot of the live streams. So, for instance, the moderators over here said Niji Sanji fucked up. They didn't remove my mod. Please sub to Doki Bird on the stream yeah, chat. Dude, actual rebellion. So what happens is her new account gets gassed up, and Doki Bird went from I shit you not. Yeah, this is actually insane to see how massive this story is. Having nine thousand something subscribers and gaining like two hundred thousand in a day. Do yeah, she, the fact that she got in the last week of half a million subscribers in one week is insane dude look at this subscribers in the last 30 days 485,000 and this is an old screenshot don't believe me look at these crazy metrics dude, look at this 200,000 subscribers in a day she got more subs than views actually insane tricks on sunday <laughs> february the 4th and you know every single one of these people subscribing to her is someone that's upset at niji sanji vindication at 9023 subscribers okay 9230 and then of course a day later 216,296 386 she is by far one of the fastest growing creators on the planet and all because of this crazy implosion yep. and do i support her absolutely if you build yeah. a platform that is your Let's platform go. you deserve to keep it so if things didn't get too bad for niji sanji the implosion continues and at this point they start throwing a little bit more fuel into the fire or <laughs> yeah. the glory is the pit that niji sanji is in right now was dug primarily by them themselves. Rather, a whole bunch of actual like big brands. For instance, Studio Nekamata basically comes out and says, hey, listen, we're cutting our ties with any color over this situation. And any stock we have is sold at bye cost bye. until bye February. Bye bye. Anything bye bye. left over bye bye. Bye is bye. being fucking donated to charity. And the boycott begins. They're not even really trying to get their money back in the situation. They just want to be cut 100% completely. And of course, it wasn't just like, you know, other VTubers, other people. It was the artists involved too that actually jumped in and started giving her Vindication. support, actually taking her side in this situation. Now, what's insane about it too is it turned out, it's been alleged by Doki Bird that even Niji Sanji, the evil corporation that apparently now that they're painted as, didn't even let the creators keep their achievements. Now, to give you an idea, yeah, there's again, something that. This was, was for me this was old news for me this was fucking old ass news but but again this is just hitting the youtube community again and and everyone's sitting there and being like but why why wouldn't they even give their play buttons to the talent because they want to remind their talent every single day when they wake up that they are owned by their masters at any color that they are owned by niji sanji it's literally like it's a power move it's teabagging someone in a video game you already killed him why would you need to teabag him it's, it's because when you put your balls in his mouth, it makes him realize that he is the inferior life form. That is exactly what Niji Sanji is doing with these play buttons. Literally. There's no reason for them to keep it.
as YouTubers. If you're large enough, you have play buttons. When you get up to 100,000 subscribers, you get a silver play button. When you get to a million subscribers, you get a gold play button. I think what's more messed up in this situation personally is this organization is more concerned about their actual well, like their, their actual financials and I guess their public image versus the fact that company cares about money. What? No. That one of their biggest creators actually had went through a pretty traumatic experience in their life and had to be hospitalized. They're not really fucking- Hey Briggs, thanks for the raid concerned about that it seems and it's not just me relaying that it's also the friends of doki bird that actually had to jump up into this situation yes, like yes, there's sir. one actual friend here that said i can only say that selling i know from my perspective is a warm-hearted serious and hard-working oh person my God, at this awful. time i personally cannot awful. agree with the company's unilateral statement after all corporate vtubers have confidentiality clauses that prohibit them from damaging a company's image and Yes. Yes. The company can say whatever they want about the VTuber, but the VTuber cannot say anything about the company. Like, how awful is that? Dude, this is like dropping allegations against somebody, but they are legally bound to not being allowed to defend themselves. It makes absolutely no sense. It's insane. It's a dumb clause, but it's only a dumb clause for, you know, anyone that wants justice in the world. It's not a dumb clause for the company. The company's literally been getting away with this for so long. So, the Selene situation is bad, but it's not the only bad situation in Niji Sanji. Look at the people that they've fired until now and note that this is not a new story. This is just the first one that became public. The rest of them were just successfully silenced. Like, I, I don't think you're fully aware of what's been going on here. Uh, another very important note here. <sighs> Corporate VTubers have confidentiality clauses that prohibit them from damaging the company's image. This is a very powerful statement because I think people, especially in the West, don't understand the slander laws in Japan. In the West, slander is when you make a statement that is misleading about someone and the statement ends up not being true. Like, for example, uh, you call someone a rapist and they're not a rapist. Well, that's slander. In Japan, slander laws are saying things that are done maliciously to harm the reputation of the company, even if it's true. Slander in Japan does not necessarily need to be false. That, that is J Japanese slander laws. So technically, if you say, um, oh, this company is fucking garbage. I hate them. They, they literally chopped my arm off. And you have proof. And you prove all of it but the intent of your statement was to damage the reputation of the company, that is slander, and you get sued for it in Japan. So you have to realize that how crazy that is telling the actual situation. So unfortunately, that's kind of the same for really any like media company that you work in, any any company in general. There are actual non-disparagement clauses, which, you know, usually when you're- Which makes sense. Non-disparagement non clauses make so much sense, but- when the entire system is based on personality and PR, because these are freaking YouTubers, these are streamers, these are influencers, PR is everything. Reputation is everything. The fact that they fire you and you can't say like, oh, they're lying about me. The fact that you can't do that is insane. You're terminated or fired, even on a good or bad term, whatever, you're not really allowed to detail the nitty gritty of what happened because the company Forget detailing the nitty gritty of what happened. They can't even say that they used to be part of Niji Sanji. It's insane. The company's public image is obviously very important to them. Any damaging of that public rep public image can cause them serious issues in their stock prices, in their money. <laughs> in Epic foreshadowing. In their relationship with other big brands. But that actually ended up happening in the situation. Yeah. We'll get to that in a second. <laughs> the most epic of foreshadowing. The epicest of epic foreshadowing. I think this company couldn't get disgusting. To give you an idea, this is an actual, still available post from the company. On February 7, 2024, Any Color says, the impact of the decision, this Crazy. is from their financials, Crazy. okay? Crazy. To terminate the affiliation contract with Niji Sanji and Liver on our financial results. They had told people that on February 5th, Any Color made the decision to terminate our affiliation contract with Niji Sanji Crazy. and Liver, Sel and Tatsuki. The impact of this decision on our financial results will be negligible. And it was not 
fucking that, negligible, okay? Dude, that word negligible is so hilarious. Every time someone tells me, do you hear about the Niji Sanji drama? And it's like, yeah, the damage to the company was negligible. Uh, negligible. Looking at their actual stock price, they actually dropped. What's going on here? We're looking at Muda stretch the butthole of Niji Sanji a little bit. Hey, Hades, welcome, welcome. Oh, Apollo's debut is happening right now. Oh, shit. I I'm going to rate it right after we finish this video. Dude, that's insane. Considerably over this situation. For instance, if you look at their stock price, uh, again, we're going to go back like, what, five days in this situation? Or, uh, well, not a month. Actually, we'll go back just five days. You can see that they went from a stock price of 3,615 yen, because this is on the Japanese stock exchange, oh, and they baby. dropped all the way down to 3,195. Oh, it's been a 4% oh, drop. It's not something that's good. Uh, obviously, Man, this is an old video. It is currently... It is currently 18% down. 18%! 18%. Negligible? My butt. Obviously, could they rebound? Probably, sure. But give, with such a backlash that's going on right now, it's gonna hurt them for a while. And especially when big brands are dipping out too. It also is so weird that this is a publicly traded company that's willing to act like children and basically ruin whatever public image they have. They, they have no idea how PR works in the West. They have no idea. They, th they just think big company postures and bows really low and big company will get away with it. But it won't. In a matter of days in this situation, whatever goodwill you built up, and especially as a media talent agency, that's all, that's your that's your money maker, your goodwill. If you throw that away and you come across as the absolute faceless scumbags, there's no reason why people are going to want to sign up with you in the future. Especially when it also appears, at least in this alleged instance, that you're not even financially providing any backing for these people to push their content. If you exist True. as somebody to just take money Man, and pay. Spitting. Paychecks He's and not spitting. provide the bare minimums to help your content creators actually elevate their content, then you are a useless talent organization. I've been saying this for so long. I don't think anyone fully understands how awful they are. No one gets how absolutely awful Niji Sanji is. And it's not just them. There's a bunch of VTuber companies that really don't do anything for the talent. And I think that uh, you, you could figure it out yourself. I don't need to say nothing. You, little peon in chat, okay? All right, not, not making fun of you. I really appreciate you personally. I like you a lot. Look at an agency and see if they're actually doing anything for their talent or if the talent's literally doing everything themselves. If the talent's doing literally everything themselves, then why do they need to be part of the agency? Um, the, I, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. There isn't no reason... To, to go to join Niji Sanji. Niji Sanji is a massive company. You join them, you will get a big fan base off the bat. But by the fact that they're banking on that and they're not willing to give you anything else at all, it's absurd, it's embarrassing, it's humiliating, and it's why Niji Sanji is about to fail really, really big time. And you should never be signed up with, no matter how enticing of a startup cost or a startup like, you know, boon you provide. Now, again, again, just saying, the startup boom is a big deal, and I am not downplaying the startup boom by joining an established agency. Okay, I'm just saying, startup boom is not nothing. Especially when it comes to streaming and stuff, which is such a hard, in, uh, such a hard niche to crack. So the startup boom is something. That said, is it enough? No, because you're selling your soul. <laughs> I'm just saying, I'm just saying. So big brands like Hype, for instance, actually ended up jumping in and basically saying, because of this situation, <laughs> they are cutting their ties with this organization. And the course, boycott commences! Of course, we at Hype want to stand alongside many VTuber fans that have seen support for this organization. And that's because of all the bad press that they're getting. So again, other big brands all start jumping out, and it's not a good situation. Oh no. The games media started picking- The yacht is sinking! Sorry. Sorry. Picking this up, and you know, that's pretty much the death knell of this situation.
Look, I'm just saying, joining Niji Sanji, they give you a massive boost originally. It's like, they put a million eyeballs on your content. The hardest part when it comes to streaming is getting your content in front of people. They put a million eyeballs on your curtain on your content. Yes, they might harvest your organs in the future, but I'm just saying there's positive and negatives to everything, am I right? The only positive about this situation was obviously Doki Bird or Selen had ended up, you know, basically living through the situation. A very terrible, terrible, terrible period of her life that she had to unfortunately Dude, go through. So she true. ended up living for the better and she came back to an actual channel, an actual brand that belongs to her. And she managed to carry on that hype. The crazy amount of hype that she got from Nichi Sanji, especially leaving Nichi Sanji into her brand. Um, a lot of streamers and VTubers, a lot of VTubers that are part of one of the major corporations and end up leaving, um, they flounder and fail once they're in a new place. Uh, once they actually make it to a new area, a new situation, they flounder and they fail and they never actually get anywhere. That's not a big surprise at all. But it's the fact that she left, not hated by anyone, and made this entire drama situation that we're all that I am talking about right now. It's all literally free advertisement for this for Doki Bird, and she deserves all of this success and love. Um, it just makes it such a crazy situation. Which is one thing that I wish, if anybody is in this industry, you know, I look at these organizations kind of like YouTube MCNs. In a they are not like YouTube MCNs. Uh, I get the outside perspective thinking that they are similar to YouTube MCNs. The way MCNs work is the, um, all the YouTube payment goes to the MCN. All the YouTube payment goes to the MCN, and uh, they basically give you, like, let's say 90% of your revenue, and they'll keep 10% or 20%, whatever the MCN takes. And they provide you with basically nothing. Uh, Niji Sanji is supposed to be a talent agency. It gives you the model. These models, by the way, could cost five to $10,000. And someone who's just a starting out streamer cannot afford a model like that. So a five to $10,000 model is a massive investment that someone that doesn't have a platform wouldn't necessarily be able to afford. So they do give you that upfront, but then they ditch you entirely. Then they go MCN mode. The other difference is an MCN will take, let's say 15, 20%, whatever. Niji Sanji, okay, I'm not, I don't know. If I hypothetically did have the contract, I would know the exact numbers. But uh, let's say I don't have the contract. They take 50% of the revenue from um, ads and donations. But they take all the sponsor revenue and they take 98% of the merch revenue. This is not an MCN. This is a billion times more predatory. Yes, they're suppo they supposedly give you more at the get-go. But bro, you don't need two kidneys. You only need one. <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. Grand if you catch my drift. Majority of cases, I think they exist to actually just parasitically take from the actual creator and not give anything in return. Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. The thing they so that's MCNs. That's the MCN model. They give nothing in return. Niji Sanji also doesn't give anything, but they do give the initial model and the hype. That is one thing. One thing that they do give that you can't take away from them. The fact that we are talking about Selene right now is because Niji Sanji has a big name and hired her. Um, that said, you don't need two kidneys. But in that entire situation, she ended up coming back and talking about, you know, ladies and gentlemen, this all was the result of months and months of actual, yeah. you know, things leading to a breaking point. And she actually has medical records and, of course, Crazy. statements about that. Oh, God, it's such an ugly situation. I, I feel so bad for her that she had to go through this specific experience. She even said in that stream that she found out literally that she was fired from the Twitter announcement. They didn't even- Which is so fucked up. See, again, I said this in my last video, and I had people clipping this out of context and posting it to say that I'm I'm being bad faith towards Niji Sanji. So I'm gonna say it again so people know that uh, it's not actually bad faith. And I mean it 100% when I say it. I don't think it is impossible to think that Niji Sanji wanted her to go through with um, trying to take her own life. I don't think that that's far-fetched. All, all the crazy amount of hate that Niji Sanji is getting right now would have been avoided. And I do think that they would have... Like, it, it, it's so inhuman it hurts to say, but I don't think that it's impossible that they at least hoped that something like that would happen. Like, just, just run through it in your head a little bit. 
They know that she tries to kill herself two times. They fire her and drag her name publicly over Twitter, and that is exactly how... Um, that And that is exactly how she learns that she's fired. Then, when she does her first stream back, her first stream back, Niji Sanji releases their PR statement to coincide with her playing Neopets three minutes into her stream. I'm so happy she's okay and surrounded by good people right now, but I don't think Niji Sanji's consistent and persistent attacks targeted at her mental health was not on purpose. Um, I know that sounds even too mean to say, which is why I think people aren't saying it, but I do think it's worth considering that they at least don't care, at most want it to happen. I'm just saying. That's dark as fuck, but I'm just saying. She didn't even send anything in private. She found out through Twitter she was fired and terminated from her contract. Now, because lawyers are involved, there's not much more elaboration you can build upon the bullying claims that were made, simply because I assume that there is an actual case going on, and that's pretty much what it's, you know, coming yeah. out to. So we'll that's find out like. about this years from now. But of course... Uh, we probably won't. If I had to guess that whatever the lawyers end up settling, Nichi Sanji will desperately pay whatever they need to pay to be, um, to keep it silenced. And I have a feeling it'll be kept silenced. Whatever... They actually, whatever conclusion they reach, I have a feeling it will never get to the public. Um, at least not everything, unfortunately. Because that, that's Niji san that's been their strategy the entire time. And again, I'm saying this based on past precedent. There is one streamer in the past that they've terminated, that they went through a lawsuit, and literally no one in, no one in the public actually knows. No one in the public actually knows. <laughs> <laughs> no one in the public actually knows that there was this lawsuit. Everyone thinks it just parted on amicable terms, even though there was an actual lawsuit that, that happened. Um, and I'm not going to start talking about or pointing fingers, but that's been their game plan the whole time. First, the next big thing in this situation was how she said that she apparently made zero profits in 2023 as Selen. She ended up actually having to spend somewhere around $200,000. Okay? Yeah. Yes. $200,000 thousand dollars of her own money by the way by the way by the way you know there are people that can only wish to make that amount in a year but that's how much she ended up having to spend in this situation as a vtuber so even like goldman sachs ended up like talking about any color share price and how they fell because of this quarter and uh, obviously they address this situation as well too and they it, some people have been saying this sounds like an alert but they really just talked about the fact that at least for this quarter it seems like things are a little bit tumultuous but maybe things can come back in the future that of course is yet to be decided this situation i think is far from over and given how emotionally oh, charged baby. it is it oh baby it just keeps getting worse this is like one of the most wild cases of every time you think it's coming to a conclusion niji sanji decides to find another way to make it even worse than it was aren't predatory contracts like this illegal um i don't think so it can really go either way point is niji sanji any color has imploded and caused some serious damage and so beyond all of this there has to be some response that this company has made that has to at least make some sense out of the situation trying to claw back yeah. some level of like, <laughs> respect and they make the worst response in the history of time act so at this moment in time one of the other creators i still can't believe this happened i still can't believe this happened I still can't believe this happened. I mean, obviously, uh, I think that Niji kind of forced her to do this because there's no way in a million years she thought it was a good idea. Uh, th this has been my gut opinion when people ask me behind the scenes what, what went on with that private, with this message. Uh, he'll, he'll elaborate. And I'll tell you my theory. From Niji Sanji, Elira Pandora actually makes a statement, which is so wild, like getting the other talent yeah. to be your mouthpiece yeah. when you as an organization yeah. should really be the ones that are the mouthpiece. And also, it's important to note that in the beginning of Elira Pandora's stream, she says that I volunteered for this. I volunteered for this position of making this statement. And the thing is, if Niji Sanji's always putting their words in their talent's mouth, for all you know... She, they volunteered for this is just bullshit. Like, it's, you can't trust a word that comes out of their mouths.
So whether they were basically forced to do this or, you know, incentivized is a whole different story. But it ended up being like this 15 minute like black screen post where this individual was talking about the situation. And well, you can see that it wasn't exactly received. several individuals. Yeah, God damn, that's awful. Received all that well. Granted, this is a dislike extension, so it's not the accurate dislike. It's just using an aggregated metric. But yes, it wasn't really accepted all that well, seemingly. Now, to go on to the Illyra video, which, again, is mostly just a Niji Sanji PR post, but done through the mouths of three of their talent, okay? You've got Illyra Pandora, Vox Akuma, and Ike Eveland. Again, these are supposed to be the friends of yeah, Selenus. Yeah, th but that, that's why they were picked, sort of, it seems. As well, but they're, you know, obviously being the mouthpiece of this organization. To give you an idea of how unprofessional this is, this should have only been done through the mouthpiece of a PR representative of the company. Unless the entire company is based on um, putting words in the mouths of the talent to protect their own reputation. And it's almost as if they've been doing that for the last 10 years. Okay, they haven't existed for 10 years, but you get my drift. And again, your talent is not necessarily your PR agents as well. They shouldn't be speaking on your behalf. But a quick rundown of this video, and you can watch it for yourself. It's obviously not well received, but the idea here is that the group here, Illyra and obviously Niji Sanji, claim that everything here is their own words, their feelings, and obviously everything here is supposed to be approved by lawyers. And they actually claim that they have documentation from, of course, Selen's oh, legal God. team. Oh, God, this was so which, of bad. Course, you know, b comes up with actual examples of her, uh, you know, bullying that had actually happened towards her, right? Uh, and that was her claimed experiences, they say. The documentation that they have actually has, you know, personal information. And, of course, they notice that if some of that information is apparently, you know, brought ever into the public, these people could potentially be doxxed, for instance, right? Uh, we yeah, that's that's the big fear. I don't know. I think that um, Niji had a veiled threat that they were going to dox um, Selen through all this because they say that, well, we're not releasing this information publicly, but our talents can because they aren't bound to a contract. And then they leak the documents to the talents, basically saying if the talents want, they could dox you. Which is just a really weird, really weird perspective. Which, you know, they kind of, the documents, I guess, imply a rough location of where they actually live. And of course, they also alluded to, again, you know, basically telling everyone that Selen basically alludes that management actually had some favorites that they were playing. And Which is like, let's be honest, obviously they do. Uh, <laughs> And for them to claim they don't is stupid. Apparently there was a secretly recorded conversation talking about this that she was using for document, like a, a documented evidence for her case. In fact, Doki Bird even talks about this specific situation too. In fact, a lot of the documentation was meant for her, the staff at Niji Sanji, and the legal teams involved. And they ended up leaking it to the talents. Dude, Niji Sanji will do anything in their power, anything in their power to save some face. But they don't realize that people seeing how, like, cruel and manipulative they are when they try to save face does the exact opposite of what they're actually trying to do. It's insane watching this go down, like, how, uh, how brain dead they are covering this entire situation. Never to be shared with the actual, you know, friends of her or ex-friends, I would say, or a lot of the other talent. Like, how on earth did they think that the appropriate, okay, like, like, try, try to follow this, this chain of this thought process for just a moment. Due to bad management, bullying, whatever the hell happened there, girl attempts to kill herself two times. Niji Sanji's response is to fire her publicly, to drag her name to get her former friends to talk about how she's a shitty person. Like, what are you doing? What on earth are you doing? How is this going to make you look better? What was going through their head? In fact, it appears, at least it seems based on Doki Bird, that some of this documentation contained medical information, which being that she's from Canada, she th this would be information that wouldn't allow to be freely shared because of Pepeda laws. 
and again, if Niji Sanji is claiming to share this information, uh, it doesn't matter what kind of NDAs that they have, no matter what they justify it as, these could be serious issues for them legally. But then yeah. again, with the way that they've handled this shit so unprofessionally, I don't think they necessarily care about being on the right side of things legally. Again, I'm not a lawyer. Regarding concerns that have arisen in relation to our current situation, in the stream done earlier by our livers, a message from Niji Sanji it was mentioned that parts of information received from Selen and her lawyer were shared to them by Any Color Incorporated. See, this this, this is the worst statement in the world every single time. And in that stream and in the notice published by Any Color Inc., uh, you know, the notice termination of her contract, Selen and her lawyer claimed that livers associated with Any Color Incorporated were involved and that they will hold Any Color Inc. legally responsible. Selen and her lawyer mentioned the possibility that they will also hold livers associated with Any Color Inc. legally responsible. In order to check the validity of Selen and her lawyer's claim, Any Color Inc. shared only necessary parts of the information sent by her lawyer so with bad. Her livers so bad. and led an internal investigation. Oh, dude, wait, wait, I'm I'm so excited for this the end of this tweet. Mood is gonna lose his mind. Why would you send it in amongst other creators in general if it's sensitive information? Do you understand how stupid that sounds? <laughs> yes, just because you are part and represented does not mean you can share people's private personal information in amongst your cohorts Obviously. of other creators. It makes no sense. No, no. Th th this whole this tweet, I think, um, might be the worst thing uh, they've done. Like, just... From, from a basic, not not the worst thing they've done on a humanitarian level, but probably the dumbest thing that they've done in uh, just like on a basic um, common sense level. Like, look at this entire tweet, all right? He, they start off with saying, in order to check the validity of his attend and lawyer's claim, they had to share the private stuff to the streamers. Okay. Next, any color never leaked the stuff. However, the streamers are not held by this confidentiality so they could leak the stuff that we showed them illegally. And then after a rigorous legal check, they hereby declare themselves as not making confidentiality violations. This whole tweet is like a shit show. It, it, this tweet is exactly what, uh, uh, what Niji's headspace is right now. Just an absolute disaster, like a catatonic disaster. Um... That they don't care about anyone. They're, they're just going to say anything they can to try to save a modicum of reputation. They don't care who they have to throw under the bus. They don't care how many lies they have to tell. They don't care if their tweets don't make sense as long as they spare themselves a tiny bit of shame. Vindication! Just saying, just saying. What is wrong with you? To begin with, Any Color Incorporated has not made any confidentiality violations regarding submitted documents for legal claims such as these. Uh, However, according to them, specific information. I mean, they they said that you gotta trust them. When they said that they didn't violate anything, we gotta believe them, right? They've been pretty honest until now. Documentation which Selen's lawyers requested, we do not share with our libraries. With utmost consideration of this request, Any Color Inc. has not shared any such information. In addition, our liars, our livers are not held to any confidentiality obligation we are held by can confidentiality so therefore we are not going to leak anything except we had to show our livers now our livers they aren't held by anything so they can dox the hell out of you if they want regarding the information shared to them from any color inc thus there are no legal issues regarding the information shared after a rigorous legal check any color inc hereby declares that it has not made any confidentiality violations yeah, this is just obama putting the medal on obama it's like after we looked into it we have realized that we have not in fact made any mistakes you're welcome while checking the validity of claims made by Selen and her lawyer with its affiliated livers. Man, that is like just patting yourself on the back, putting the fucking metal on you. <laughs> I like, used the same Obama analogy. No. You, you just checked yourself, and now you hereby declare that you've done no sin. It is all halal. We declared that it's good, okay? <laughs> And given that what is alleged to be oh, released, God. at least from Doki Bird, is actually medical and hospital records in this situation. Which is incredibly private stuff and should under no circumstances be shown to anyone. Uh, without her consent, that should have been kept private. And again, even the Any Color Corporation ended up coming out like five hours before I recorded this video. And literally it even apologized. Uh, again, addressed. Dude, I love this bow too. It's like, does it? not look like this guy just got hit in the nuts 
Like, th this is the position I would take if I got hit in the balls. Hours before I recorded this video, and literally it even apologized. The CEO makes an apology video and doesn't even address the situation. Bro should have whipped out the ukulele. Bro should have learned a thing or two from freaking Yandere Dev. This is the worst apology video of all time. I think it, it beats all the other ones. Uh, again, address their concerns. I'm Riku Tazumi, CEO of Any Color Incorporated. I'm making this video to speak directly to you. Now, this is and you wonder why he hires freaking uh, high school students that have basic English understandings to be the talent managers for the English branch. Six minutes and 35 seconds of, I guess you could say, just, you know, bottom of the barrel promises. And that's pretty much all it comes down to. Uh, will this company actually address? Will this company actually, like, get some level of professionalism? No. Uh, this company will never address the elephant in the room. And that is the, uh, the mental health. The mental health aspect. Uh, because that's that's it. That's the important part, and that's the part that everyone's kind of kind of skipping. Dude, it sucks. Who knows at this point, ladies and gentlemen? What I have learned in this situation is this is not a good company. <laughs> Vindication. I'm saying i'm just saying and if anything this is a company that i would stay far far away from because of all of this backlash he kept that in he didn't cut that out <laughs> Oh my god, dude, I love Muda so much. Seems as though that a lot of the people are- They'll like spend like a hundred hours researching something and then he just won't cut out the random typing sounds in his video. Accusing, uh, you know, any color of being a black company, which according in Japanese-like terms, is an exploitative sweatshop. I actually personally think that all of these organizations are things that you should stay away from. Bro didn't even get into the fact that they take 98% of merch revenue. Oh my god, dude, you're, this is the beginning of the iceberg, the tip of the iceberg. Look, at the end of the day... Okay, it's, it, it, I'd say it's pretty pretty halfway down the iceberg. This is a company that has basically jumped into a market that is worth billions of dollars, right? They've kind of pioneered the market. Um, I, I think that that's another reason why they're just so successful. They're so, a lot of people aren't the best at what they do, but they're the first at what they do. And that kind of catapults them to success. Um, I really think that's sort of what's been happening here. They're kind of the first to do it. And, um, being that first to do it, I mean, I get it. I get it. They're successful. They have eyes on them and every talent gets, uh, integrated fan base just by existing. Um, that said, they have no moral qualms and no need to beat any other company, right? If you think about it, this is how competition is supposed to work. Competition works. One company will offer you a 50% cut, and then the next company will offer you a 60% cut. That's competition. And then you're going to go to the company with the 60% cut because, obviously, that's better. They have the better deal. The issue here is, even though Niji Sanji is, is giving you 2% of revenue for merch, the alternative is a much, much smaller company. You're gonna be 50 times bigger if you join Niji Sanji than if you just went it at your own. So it's kind of worth it. And then they're like, you don't need two kidneys. That's how big the actual, um, that's how big the actual VTuber industry is. And a lot of the VTubers that are part of this like ecosystem are some of the biggest creators that if you're watching my channel, you may not be a VTuber enjoyer or somebody that watches. Ah! just this content but you cannot deny the level of act no it's massive it's massive uh i think it's it's very important to uh recognize and realize how big it is just like mukbangs okay mukbangs are massive people get millions of views doing mukbangs i hate that content i find it revolting but you have to recognize how big the actual market for it is i uh, think he makes a good point this is this is a huge situation like if you look at the um if you look at the top female streamers of the last year like eight out of ten of them are vtubers this is the top female streamers this includes valkyrie and and pokimane and all these gamers and uh i think eight out of ten were vtubers it just goes to show the magnitude and the size of this actual industry it's so big and the juggernaut niji sanji has been treating their talent this way the entire time 
actual like success that they have built up. And of course, when you build up this level of success, there's going to be organizations like this in idol culture, whatever kind of culture that are literally there existing to prey and predate on these individuals. And it seems like this is a story of like how one individual basically jumped into this organization and unfortunately their experience was outright bad. That's not to say everybody's experience is probably terrible, but in this situation, a lot of eyes were opened up and it seems like a lot- Ah, <sighs> finally! Finally! Eyes were opened, baby. I feel like that's a really good way to kind of put it because I think everyone that actually knew about the Niji Sanji stuff that wasn't just blinded by the VTuber space, people saw the VTuber space that was basically, the path was created by some by people like Niji Sanji and Hololive. They made the market, the basic market understanding of what all of this is. Um, they created the entire industry and community. So when they say, we're going to own your soul when you join the company, well, you say that makes sense because there's nothing to compare that to. So people in the VTuber industry always thought it was a totally normal thing that, yeah, okay, the VTuber company owns your soul. Uh, they will own your soul, potentially harvest your organs, but uh, the content will be good. Um, whereas anyone that works in like a basic streamer industry will recognize just how absolutely insane, insane these companies actually are. Like, I remember when I first told Charlie about this and like what the, these contracts looked like, he lost his mind. He actually lost his mind. He's like, wait a second, does Niji Sanji take 20% of the revenue? And I was like, <laughs> 20%. Try 98% of merch. <laughs> Try 100% of sponsors. Try 50% of donations. He was just flabbergasted. A lot of the people that are offering their... Like, Niji Sanji was the gold standard of VTuber companies. Dude, Niji Sanji is the gold... Was, about a month ago, the gold standard of VTuber companies. <sighs> support to you know selling doki bird are people that have been in this industry people that do know their character and can attest for it and now i'm not going to sit here and pretend that there may not be two sides to every story i'm sure that there is yeah but, but here's the thing you're right there are two you want you listen to be completely good faith here on eg sanji's side you're right she did break some rules however nothing that eg sanji actually did is even remotely ethical <laughs> So I would take someone not getting approval from the manager before posting something online. I think that's a lot less egregious uh, as uh, compared to, oh, this person tried to kill herself. Let's drag her publicly on Twitter and hope she goes through with it next time. But given the unprofessionalism witnessed by the Niji Sanji group right now and any color corporation, incorporated, whatever, it obviously, like, the, the amount of support that the community is putting towards Selen obviously is a shown of itself. Yeah. Uh, obviously, you know. It's you insane. I feel like this will uh, change VTubing forever. This is probably what the uh, one of the most cataclysmic moments in VTubing history, and it always will be. I think this, this will actually be, like, in the history books for destroying a company and shit like that. You can see, like how beloved this individual is versus this, you know, corporation that has just seemingly treated the situation entirely like a And a joke. corporation that had diehard fans defending them and threatening the lives of people that criticized them. Like, insane. Look, at the end of the day, toxic workplace cultures exist in nearly every field. And that's not an okay statement. You know, we should be trying to get rid of as much toxicity in workplaces that we can. And this isn't a situation of, oh, this is how it is in Japan, or this is how it is in the United States. Which is a good point, sir. Because ultimately, people are people. And it doesn't matter that, oh, it, it, Japanese culture, it makes sense to torture your talent. Okay, well, that that maybe that's a bad thing. <laughs> States, or Canada, or whatever. At the end of the day, if you are in a situation where you feel that you are bullied, that you are being intimidated, that you are not being respected, then it is a situation that you should be allowed to leave in a neutral fashion without any, you know, bad blood. And unfortunately, that is not always the case. 
That is not always the case. You can't always get out of these situations. I mean, you could have bad blood. Obviously, we're all human beings. We all have our own thought processes and emotions. Cringe. But you shouldn't be walking away with something knowing that dirty laundry could get aired or you may not have the exit that you legally are entitled to. Ladies and gentlemen, at the end of the day, Doki Bird... <sighs> Niji Sanji's contracts are so vague that uh, they could basically put anything under categories of you breaking the rules. Uh, they have rules like, you know, don't mention third-party IPs that we don't have specific permission for. That's one of the rules in the actual Niji Sanji contracts. So if you're on stream and you just mention Pokemon, you just mention Pokemon, you are technically technically breaking the rules and when they fire you they will include a bullet point in their entire laundry list of crimes that you've committed all right they will include as one of the bullet points potentially caused a massive copyright disaster to the company of niji sanji brother they could do that and that would give them the legal grounds to fire you in a dishonorable way and silence your criticism because technically you broke the rules you mentioned pokemon managed to make it out of this with her life and of course with her platform uh intact a platform that is growing and you know for anybody that's in the niji sanji group obviously i can't fault some of these creators either you know being yeah. in a situation like this you you do answer to bosses right and obviously for these three sure. people that have to run us not just answer to bosses you are controlled by your bosses you don't own your own platform uh you don't own the words that come out of your mouth in niji sanji stream basically being mouthpieces i'm not going to outright vilify them but i think it's just shitty personally seeing that these people that are friends are ultimately you know going after the paycheck more obviously yeah so i i didn't actually say this in so many words um during that uh, segment i told you i was gonna tell you my theory my theory for that uh, call where vox ike and alira all came out together to talk about this i do believe niji sanji basically told them they had to do it and they did it and once they were doing it they tried to make it as damning as possible and get everything they possibly could off their chest uh that that's kind of my perspective so while i do think that it's primarily niji sanji's fault for just an awful pr decision that just makes everything much uglier i don't think that no fault would fall on the shoulders of the people that actually said those words i don't know if that's too harsh but i really think that that's kind of the case it's easy to say this from the outside looking in i don't entirely know the ins and out of this organization but yeah selen managed to get out of it and if anything this opened up eyes for outside oh, yeah. parties to look oh into yeah how some of these organizations operate look dude people that used to leave niji sanji were like mourned now people are going to leave niji sanji and be praised like it, this was such an eye-opening event for so many people in the community there's been accusations thrown at niji sanji now because that they're a black company and i mentioned this term in the beginning a black company in japan is typically known as an exploitative sweatshop like company and unfortunately uh, it really seems like when it comes to, in my experience with talent agencies, and this has nothing to do with Niji Sanji, I really do feel that when it comes to agencies that are out there to specifically profit and, and, and just earn off of the backs of talented individuals. And I think he's thinking of MCNs because we've all had issues with MCNs. Really does seem to be a sweatshop, almost predatory angle to this situation. Yeah, I think every new industry as it develops, like it'll start based on some sort of passion. Right? Obviously, Niji Sanji started based on passion. People love this content, and that's how it started. Right? So every single company I think that gets big is an idea that's birthed from passion, and then the next generation immediately exploits it and tries their best to turn it into a sweatshop because that'll optimize the revenue flow. Um, I do think that's kind of what the Niji Sanji, what Niji Sanji sort of went through here, right? They started out of love, they got massive, and they immediately tried their very best to cut corners and, you know, make as much profit as possible. They hired part-time Japanese high school students to be the English managers. I, I, that's mind-bogglingly dumb. But it cuts corners and saves a couple of pennies. And look, at the end of the day... Given what I've seen. And I think that's what MCNs were in the beginning. When YouTubers started actually making money through YouTube, MCN stepped into place and say, hey, hey, we'll collect your money. We'll help you out. We'll co connect you with people and stuff. We're going to be awesome for you. And the people believed in these MCNs and followed them. And MCNs were literally just predatory, taking a 10 to 20% cut of the YouTuber's revenue for absolutely no reason. And they didn't actually help or benefit at all. And now we've outgrown MCNs.
because we passed. I think that the uh, the life cycle of YouTube, like over the last you know ten years, that YouTube's like really been around and you've been able to make money on YouTube, is kind of going to be the same exact life cycle for VTubers. Like you had the machinima type MCNs in the beginning a, a decade ago on YouTube thriving, and you have Niji Sanji two years ago thriving. I think the same way the MCNs are going to fall out of vogue, and people are going to finally find a way to either join some sort of talent agency to get them sponsors or go it alone. That's going to be much more of the direction that uh, VTubing takes. Not to say that I don't think agencies will exist. There is obviously a big difference between VTubing and the you know. IRL streaming YouTube sphere because when it comes to like making YouTube videos you literally only need a laptop and a phone to be a VTuber you need a laptop a phone but you also need a good ass model to get people to notice you there will always be that jump that there needs to be that original initial investment now I do think we'll be moving away from the super duper predatory Niji Sanji type companies but um, I'm just excited to see where the industry grows from there Scene, and given some of these interactions, given some of her, the very, very tiny things that, you know, Selen wanted to have done, such as... Dude, but the fact that freaking Niji Sanji just said, Oh no, you can't have a, an art contest. Oh, you can't do this song. Actual idiots. I think the first step, the actual first step we're going to see with VTuber agencies moving forward is that they're going to be giving their talent the ability to actually do whatever the hell they want to some extent. Like... You can't keep your talent in a in a little freaking box because people want to watch the human that they're watching. They don't want to watch a sock puppet for the overlords that are using them as this little uh, waifu cum sock trying to drain as much money as they possibly can out of their viewers. Obviously, they're going to want that more human connection that I think you can get when someone can actually do or say what they want to do or say. Hosting her own competition, hosting her own contest where she wanted to give out money, and that was met, I guess, allegedly you know in a gridlock state you couldn't actually do anything of your own accord these are things that just all when they when you add when you add this all up the sum of it is a company that at least from the outside looking in i never want to have anything associated with so yeah this is the implosion of niji sanji yes sir and honestly yes sir i have to say uh, i i i expect more things to be coming out soon especially Vindication. since there's an active legal situation involving goki bird and niji sanji and obviously, I can imagine that there may be other VTubers that come out with certain experiences, maybe similar, sometime in the future. This uh, yeah, it probably is going to happen, and it's probably going to be insane. This is far from over. That's oh, it, yeah. Th this, this story has been harrowing. It's been eye-opening. And I think people are finally realizing that uh, Niji Sanji operates the same way pimps operated in the 1940s. Okay? Like... It, it's actually insane that they got away with it for as long as they did in a world like uh, like this with the internet where people could just say whatever they want and leak whatever they want to 4chan or whatever anonymously. Um, however, people were just scared of the lawsuits and people are finally realizing that and that just makes it worse. See, silencing criticism is good as long as the criticism is silenced. But the moment one person speaks up and people know that you've just silenced 10 situations exactly like this in the past, it makes it so much worse. So much worse. It's the ultimate reverse Uno card. Ah, vindication. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a topic that interested me, honestly, coming across like an actual implosion of one of the biggest media companies in the world. True. It, it's a, it's worth over three, it was worth over $3 billion. That's a big freaking company. Dude, they have hundreds of talent. More, literally, more than a hundred VTubers working for this agency. Is an interesting topic to look into in yeah. general. But, ladies and gentlemen, this is me, Mudahar. This video has gone on long enough. If you like what you saw, Damn. please like, comment, and subscribe. Just like. Dude makes such good videos. Like, he doesn't know much about the VTuber industry, but he came in and annihilated Niji Sanji. Um, I don't. Again, I don't think it was that hard to do. They did a pretty good job annihilating themselves. However, it's still pretty dope. Dude did a great job. Great video good coverage and the more people that talk about this the better whether it's inside the industry or outside the industry i think both are equally important um so very cool very cool like subscribe and this video was streamed live on kick.com slash see you there stay weird fam